Good evening, Dungeon Masters, I'm Baron Durop. It might seem really weird to ask what a first-person shooter's level design can teach us about dungeon mapping, but truth be told, early D&D module writers were also some of the first FPS level designers. So let's look at one of the most beloved FPS maps, Dust 2 from Counter-Strike, and talk about why this map is a masterclass of D&D dungeon design. Game designer Janelle Jaquez happens to be one of the few people to receive accolades for both her AD&D modules, including Dark Tower or Caverns of Thracia, as well as the level design for Quake 2 and Quake 3. Further, it's clear her pioneering D&D concepts carried over to the first-person shooter genre. Additionally, many FPSs that followed her work demonstrate her influences. D&D blogger Justin Alexander even coined the term Jaquaying the Dungeon to demonstrate her concepts in D&D map design. In the video game industry, however, Counter-Strike's designer David Johnston, when designing the multiplayer map Dust 2, took Janelle Jaquay's core concepts and distilled them to near perfection. So what were Jaquay's core concepts, and how did Johnston exemplify them with Dust 2? Jaquez asserts a dungeon's layout should be looping and fractal in nature. Not only should a dungeon's layout have branching paths with meaningful choices for the players to choose which path to take, but that these branching paths should also loop back on one another to create recontextualized dungeon spaces. Interestingly, these fractal or branching loops shouldn't be limited to only one single level expression of the dungeon either. Larger, multi-story dungeon complexes should have multiple loops that connect the dungeon floors to the levels beneath them, perhaps even skipping some floors along the way. Furthermore, Jaquez asserts a dungeon should have multiple entry points from the overland world. By providing multiple entryways, you further give both the PCs and the NPCs the ability to treat the overland environment near the dungeon as part of the looping path experience. Smart players might run into a problem when exploring from one direction, only to find that the problem is easier solved when entering the dungeon from a different location. To see these concepts in action, let's look at the Counter-Strike multiplayer map Dust 2 and analyze it using Jaquez's principles. Right out of the gate, the map's looping structure is blatantly obvious. To iterate the relevant gameplay objectives, the blue team spawns in a building in the north end of the map, while the yellow team spawns at the south end. These spawn points are effectively dungeon entrances. The goal for the yellow team is to reach and hold objective locations A and B and deliver an explosive payload. Meanwhile, it's up to the blue team to stop yellow from doing that. The aptly named paths A, B, and Mid connect the player's spawn locations to each objective area, but also add movement flexibility toward their goals. What's interesting about this layout is how the map's design encourages choke points at specific locations on the map due to the spawn point and objective location placement. Furthermore, the designer provides distinct tactical gameplay situations that feel reflective of each path's thematic design. The B path, for example, is a series of tightly cramped tunnels favoring players with close quarters weapons, while the A path is an open roadway where sharpshooters can leverage the high points. To iterate on Jaquay's design philosophy, it's not just that each looping path is interconnected, but that each path also contains its own interesting narrative keystones. The tight, winding elevation changes of the mid path and their connected routes, for example, reinforce a cramped Moroccan back alleys construction. So what can we take away from this to build our own dungeons? First, each branching loop has its own sub-narrative before it connects back to the larger map structure. Secondly, players on different branching paths can only interact with each other when those paths intersect. As a result, owning the high ground in the mid-path's catwalk doesn't also afford a player high ground control over the A-path. This further reinforces the distinct looping branch design. And thirdly, elevation is used to break up the path's linear form, but also offers tactical interest to the players. Now, with all these observations made, let's make our own dungeon map.
So here's a dungeon map I drew up really quickly, heavily inspired by the layout of Dust 2. Loops in the dungeon are everywhere for the players to explore, but each looped path has its own self-contained thematic issue. To kick things off, each dungeon entrance has some foreshadowing on the state of the dungeon at large. The north entrance has a freshly killed goblin body, while the south entrance greets players with a frostbitten corpse. If the players decide to take the A path, they run into a swarm of sturges eating corpses. Perhaps it's another dead goblin. Alternatively, the B path has a number of goblins holed up in a safe room, very politely discussing what their next move is. These goblins have lost at least two clan members in this dungeon and are terrified by the Ice White and his cronies. The center of the dungeon links everything together with a ghoulish meat locker. The undead boss and his ilk hang up their future meals to dry on meat hooks here. To create a wandering monster table for the dungeon, we can include ghouls or zombies, some more sturges looking for food, more goblins who have come looking for their allies, or even a few hunters who are looking for the frostbitten corpse, hoping that their friend is still alive. What's great about this maze-like dungeon is that each loop, because it contains its own narrative thread, builds the dungeon's story as the players explore it in a non-linear fashion. With just a few prompts on the map, you can avoid prepping a linear, railroady, and usually contrived story. Instead, the story simply emerges as the players navigate the complex. Clearly, the goblins think there's something important in this dungeon or they wouldn't be here, and the Ice White probably has it. The Sturges are just opportunistic creatures and show up whenever there's carrion to eat. The dead and frostbitten hunter at the south entrance could be the reason the players are even here, hired too late by villagers to rescue him. That's not the only reason the players could show up, though. This dungeon could be the crypt or cairn housing the remains of a dead king, corrupted by his icy magic item the goblins want. Nearby villagers could say the gravesite is haunted, and the freezing wind blowing past the cairn is damaging their crops. Alternatively, those goblins are usually up to no good anyway, way and might have stolen a traveling merchant's family heirloom. To iterate, all of these narrative threads include the world around the dungeon, further adding to the loop-like nature of the dungeon's layout. When the nearby village is struggling with raiding goblins, failing crops, and waylaid merchants packing the inn, the dungeon doesn't really start and stop on this map, but includes the region near the dungeon as well. So when designing your own dungeons, take a page from old school shooter games like Quake and Counter-Strike. Create a looping layout where each respective path contains its own thematic attributes and builds toward a holistic story of your dungeon. If you'd like to watch more about how other video games can inspire your dungeon mastering, click the link on your screen now. The dungeon map used in this video is linked in the description too. Thanks for watching, Dungeon Masters, and until next time, good night.